All right, guys, me and Nathan are here at the feed store and we're gonna pick ourselves up some carp bait. You ready, Nate? Yeah. All right, let's do this. Dad? Oh, look at that. Hey. Look at that, is that cool? Mm -hmm. I want to the touch. I want it to pay for. Hey, check this out. 50 pound bag of dried corn, 829. This will make over 200 pounds of carb bait. And let's see, you got a 50 pound bag of bird seed, 26.49. All right, we're gonna get both of these. Yeah, it's bird seed. Now you can get the wildlife corn with molasses, but when you boil it up, it rots a lot quicker. So if you're gonna be making big batches, go without the molasses. You wanna hop on? There you go, Nate. Fill it all the way up to the top. Just let that sit for a couple hours, then we'll start cooking it. All right, it's soaked for a couple hours. We'll let it cook for a couple hours, and then we'll be done. Well, the corn's been boiling for about two hours, and it is looking nice and done. Look at that. You can tell it's done because the kernels have plumped up quite a bit. You can see they've sucked up a lot of the water and you take a kernel between your fingers and you can squish it then it's all done all right well i'll just kind of let that cool and suck up some more water and then we'll go take this and start chumming with it well welcome to another day and we're going to go fishing with this boiled feed corn you can see i've used up about half the feed corn uh, a couple days ago i went down and dumped a whole bunch of it in a spot where i plan on fishing and uh, this has been in the fridge now for oh about two weeks and you can see it's holding up very nicely. This stuff lasts a long time as long as you don't put sugar in it. What a beautiful day. Why don't you go play on the playset and I'll yell when I get a fish. It's about eight in the morning, which is a little later than I usually like to start. I'm gonna chum out a big pile of corn here. Yep. Here we go. Right here in my hand, this is a carp fishing uh, pay lake stand, okay? And it's designed for a bait casting reel. Uh, in the UK, you would call this a multiplier. Uh, but this is the preferred reel of choice for a lot of bait fishermen here in the United States, whether it's cat fishing or carp fishing. And one of the things that's really nice about it is they have bait clickers on them, which is like a built-in bite alarm. It's kind of like a bite and run reel that's particularly loud so that you can really hear the click when line's being pulled out. And these stands are designed to hold a multiplier reel. And they're just welded up metal, uh, nothing particularly light. And there's a little lever bolt here on the side that allows you to uh, adjust the angle so you can point your tips at the water or up at the sky, however you like to do it. And they're very sturdy. They're not very light, not very compact, but they don't have to be because pay lakers can usually just drive right up to their spot. There's traditional pay lake baits and rigs as well. Uh, a really popular rig is to take a, a two ounce no roll lead, uh, put it in line with a bead, uh, a three way swivel, and then have two leaders going off with octopus hooks on each end. And you put a little corn puff on each hook and then you take a pack bait made from oatmeal or grits and you add some flavoring in there. Um, usually there's specific pay lake carp baits that are quite popular. You squirt it in there and you make a big ball of grit pack bait and you stick those puffs in there and you cast that out. And uh, instead of a pay lake rig, I've got just a basic fish finder rig. I've got a lead on a slider. I've got about four or five inches of leader and then I have a blowback hair rig with a piece of fake corn. Obviously, I'm using fake corn uh, because I've got a bunch of corn chummed out there. The reason why I use fake corn instead of real corn is because it's turtle proof. We have lots and lots of turtles here, and if you're using fake corn on a hair rig, you'll never catch a turtle. If you wanna see a video on how to do a hair rig and how to tie these rigs, I'll put links in the descriptions. I've got lots of videos about this. One thing I really like about these stands easier on the back. Look at that. 
Just drive that right down, no getting down on your knees. My rod and reel combo is pretty cheap and affordable. I've got an Ugly Stick GX2, a medium heavy power. This is the six and a half foot rod. And the Ming Yang 60 reel with spider wire blue camo. Well, it's been about an hour and a half and we haven't gotten any bites, so we're gonna pack it up and try again a little bit later. Sunrise and sunset seem to be the best times to catch carp, uh, especially in the spring and summer. So I'm gonna go ahead and try again maybe later tonight and see if that doesn't help. I threw out a bunch of chum. So if uh, something kind of wanders around here and finds our chum uh, in the middle of the day, it probably will still be around here come nighttime because you know, I spread out the chum nice and wide, so it'll take it a long time to go search for each kernel of corn. Anyway, we'll see what happens. Well, it's eight o'clock at night on the same day, and I'm gonna see if I can't catch the carp on the chum I threw out earlier this morning. Um, unfortunately, it turns out there was a bit of a bass fishing tournament head here at this uh, lake and everyone was launching and coming in on this ramp. So it was a lot of activity. Uh, there was like quadruple the normal amount of boat traffic. And so that might have scared, uh, scared the fish away. This is normally a pretty quiet lake. And so we'll see what happens. I'll give it about 45 minutes if nothing happens. We'll pull up, try again sometime during the week and see if uh, things haven't calmed down a little bit. Fit. Oh, look at that. This is what I love about using these hair rigs. Hooks the fish in the bottom lip nine times out of ten. And the entire time I've been carp fishing, I've never once gut hooked a fish with a hair rig. Just does it right every time. Nice little carp, kind of an average size for this lake. Just beautiful. Well, I've been fishing for 45 minutes, landed one fish, and I'm gonna pack it up and go home and tuck the kids into bed. Well, I've got this bucket of feed corn here, and it's still in great shape after a month. So if you keep it wet, if you keep it cold, it will last a very long time. Uh, even if you don't refrigerate it, you can get several weeks out of it without much fuss. There are some other baits which I like a little bit more than feed corn. Bird seed, uh, particularly this pigeon feed, is one of them. It's three and a half times the price, but there's some advantages that might make it worth the extra money. Pigeon feed is much smaller particles, so you don't have to boil it. You can just soak it in water and it does okay. Um, I tend to like to boil it anyways, but it takes much less time, much less fuel to boil pigeon feed. Additionally, the small particles mean that it takes longer for the carp to eat all the chum. So if you're trying to keep carp in one spot to attract them to a location and keep them there, lots of small bait will keep them there longer than big chunks of bait, which they can gobble up and move on. So if I'm chumming a spot and then fishing it the same day, I tend to use the feed corn. They're big, they're attractive, the carp love them, they see them quite easily, it works good. But if I'm chumming a spot and I want the fish to be there for a long time, so I'm chumming a spot and coming back and fishing it the next day, or I'm gonna chum the same spot over and over again for you know, several days in a row, then I like to use pigeon feed because it'll keep and hold the carp in that location for longer. And oftentimes, I like to use a mixture of feed corn and pigeon feed. There's uh, Canadian peas or maple peas, winter wheat, white millet, kefir, milo, a lot of different grains. I tend to just avoid bird seeds that have sunflower seeds. We're gonna just soak the bird seed in water. Uh, the main purpose for this is you get all these little floaters, these little seeds that float up to the top. And uh, I like to make sure all my bait gets to the bottom, so I like to soak it up. Boiled bird seed's a great chum, but it's a lousy hook bait. It doesn't go on your hook very well. So I like to add some feed corn to my bird seed, just so the carp get used to seeing it, and then I can have bits of corn on my actual hook. So No, spit it, spit it, no, spit it out, spit it out. Here's another one of my favorite carp baits. This is panko breadcrumbs mixed with canned sweet corn and 
I believe this is cherry jello. Though you can use strawberry, lime, grape, whatever. It's called a pack bait because you can pack it into a ball. And you can use this as a really effective chum because you can pack it around your lead and cast it out into the water with your hook bait. Well, it's a beautiful spring day and we've got flood conditions. A beautiful time to try out our carp baits. You take this glob of pack bait, mush it into a ball, and then just squish it right around your lead. This Jello Panko corn pack bait is probably my favorite carp bait right now. I use it in so many situations, winter time, spring time, summer time. Uh, you can throw it in large quantities by making it into little balls and just chucking them out by hand into the water. You can slingshot them or you can just pack it around your lead. If you refrigerate it, it'll last a couple weeks. If you don't, it only lasts a couple days. Um, and it is just an effective, effective bait. One little trick about this Panko pack bait, you'll notice how deep the pink color is on this one. If you increase the concentration of jello in your mix, it'll make the bait stickier and it'll hold together better when casting. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that, guys. These channel cat absolutely love the Panko bait. And they love corn too. Yeah, oh, he's got a belly full of corn. Look at that. Some people spend a lot of time worrying about how long it takes their pack bait to break down and to basically a break up and crumble and come off the lead. I really don't think that's relevant at all. I think the, the carp will come up and grab bait off the bottom just as easily as they will off the lead. And it doesn't have to break down for you to catch fish. As you saw here, that fish grabbed the bait as soon as it hit the bottom. And while I was fighting the fish, I could see the intact ball of bait right there. And I'll have carp do the exact same thing. Oh. Nice average size channel catfish right there. Look at that fat belly full of corn. Not exactly a carp, but a lot of fun anyways. Right, there you go. Well, nothing too fancy. We got a nice little channel catfish, but it's time to get this boy to bed. So I'm gonna put it up for the night and throw out some chum and we'll come back at it tomorrow. Well, it's been a few days. I haven't chummed this spot in forever, but I'm just gonna throw out a ball of uh, that pack bait and some fake corn, see what happens. I see the line bouncing and jiggling and doing all sorts of stuff. Something's messing with it. Just not sure whether it's a turtle, a bluegill, a catfish, a carp, you know. There we go, pretty little carp. Oh, these are a lot of fun to catch. I think this guy had been on the hook for a little bit, but he wrapped himself around that stick and wasn't able to make a proper run, so I was just getting this bouncing all the time. There we go. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video about my favorite carp baits. If you wanna see more great carp fishing tips and tutorials, check out my playlist. I have a playlist just about carp baits. I have a playlist on how to catch carp. I have a playlist on carp gear. Check it out and don't forget to click subscribe. We put out new videos every Saturday morning. Thanks for watching, guys.